cobblers. Get what? Cobblers. <laughs> Six past twelve and threatens. What do you have to have your shoes mended for? It brings out the opponent, <laughs> don't I? Final demand, Grouse's bill, £33 two a night. Butcher, £43.9 a th You don't still go to him, do you? <laughs> Not that, Twister. I bet half the stuff down there we've never had. Probably the first time he's had your trousers down. <laughs> Have you checked it now? Unless this bill is paid within eight days, final proceedings will be taken. Oh, God. <laughs> How long have we had this one? Three weeks. Three weeks? <laughs> when you show it to me before, there is no point in hiding bills. I mean, not and they might forget them about them, but they don't. None of this stuff would have come out if I had to turn that drawer out. Really, it's getting ridiculous, Father. Why haven't you paid them? I haven't got any money. What have you done with the house, I'll pay essentials with that. Yeah, I've seen the empty bottles out in the back. <laughs> no, but this has got to stop, Father. We can't go on like this. Not on that one. That is the final demand. Put it on the legal proceeding. <laughs> There's a semblance of order around here, for God's sake. Chemist. Four months, £29. Dad, this is ridiculous. How can you spend £29 on a chemist in four months? Well... There's the toilet rolls. <laughs> you don't go for 87 quid worth of toilet rolls in a year. <laughs> Even the one in Leicester Square don't do that. <laughs> well, it's all down there. Me prescriptions, me tonics, me alibut oil tablets, me, me vitamin pills. I'm a sick man, Harold. Yeah, so am I. Sick of all this. Sick of flogging myself to death on a cart while you go flinging it round like Glebenkin with a brainstorm. Well, it's not all mine. Hey, look at this. Italian after shave lotion. 007 after bath body rub. <laughs> Dr. Wilberforce's hormone hair restorer. Yeah. Blue eyes friction scalp conditioner. Essence of lavender hair lotion. Russian lime and leather soap tablets. Yeah. Every time you walk out of here on a Saturday night, you go out smelling like an Algerian brothel. <laughs> Of this house off me. But the smell of that horse and that yard, it hangs over me like a noxious cloud. Ew. You great jesty, you are. <laughs> Didn't have to pont ourselves up in my day. Everybody smelt the same in your day. <laughs> Slipney Tin had solidified brilliantine on your hair. They thought you was Raymond Navarro. <laughs> uh, you can't tell men from women these days. Well, I can, mate. <laughs> made a mistake yeah. <laughs> but Dad, that is besides the point. I mean, look at this. Laundry, six weeks. Well, that's all yours for a start. I haven't sent any laundry in years. <laughs> and before you make any remarks about that, I'll do me own. It's cheaper and it lasts longer. All you're paying for is to have your shirts come back in cellophane bags with little cardboard bow ties stuck in the collar. What's the good of that? What well, about this, then? A corn chandler. Five months. Even Hercules grub hasn't been paid for. That is unforgivable. Final demand, gas bill. Legal proceedings, water rates. Final demand, electric light. Final demand, telephone bill. Legal proceedings, fishmonger. <laughs> Scampy. <laughs> Fresh Scotch salmon. I ain't never had any scampi or Scotch salmon. The best I've had is kippers. <laughs> hey, look, it's a regular order every Friday. <laughs> Where's that butcher's bill? <laughs> grouse? I don't even know what a grouse looks like. <laughs> Fillet steak, escalops of veal, breasts of chicken, Oh, how the other half do live. <laughs> oh, look, here's me. Half a pound of sausage meat. <laughs> oh, and a pig's trotter. <laughs> I bet I was grateful that day. I bet I was grateful. I bet I was thinking, what a nice old man. He goes without himself in order to give me my favourite dish, pig's trotter. 
<laughs> and all the time you were sitting there with a dirty great gut full of overripe pheasant. Well, if it's your favourite dish, what are you moaning about? That's only my favourite dish, because I was unaware that we was running a miniature Savoy Grill here. You didn't have to eat it, you could have had something else. Oh, it's Marie Antoinette all over again, is it? <laughs> Let them eat cake. Well, I'm telling you, mate, the tumbrils is coming for you. <laughs> You're for the chopping block. Once the local petty bourgeoisie finds out we cannot cough up the conkers, heads will roll. <laughs> and there'll be no scarlet pimpernel around to save your dirty little neck. Couldn't we query the bill, Harold? I'm sure I didn't have all that. Well, it's a bit late now, isn't it? You should check them as soon as they come in. In any case, you'll get no change out of him. He's as crooked as his meat skewers. <laughs> Honestly, Dad, you really are gullible. They can have you over as soon as look at you. Yeah, what about you? Hey, look at this. What about this for a waste of money? News agent, Financial Times, Economist, Stock Exchange Gazette, Investors Chronicle. Yeah, what do you want all that off for? Look, anybody who is in business has to keep his finger on the financial pulse of the country. You won't find the pulse where you keep your finger. <laughs> Father, I don't think you fully appreciate the gravity of the situation we find ourselves in. To put no finer point on it, we are in Stuck. <laughs> Insolvency? Proceedings. Bankruptcy? Nick. Prison? Oh, no, Harold, I couldn't do porridge at my age. I'm too old. <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I wouldn't come out. It's the only ray of sunshine I've had all day. <laughs> they wouldn't put us in, Nick. We ain't criminals. They wouldn't bung us inside just because we've run up a few debts. A few debts? But for your information, our current balance of payment deficit stands at the sum of 190 pounds, eight shillings and fourpence. 190 quid. Now, where are we going to get 190 quid? Time. That's what we need. Time. Well, that's just what we ain't got. A closing in on us like a pack of hounds for the kill. Right. All we've got to do is work out exactly how much we have got. If we can pay off... The legal proceedings will give us time to settle the final demands. Come on, how much you got? There's a pound, two, four, and eightpence. Come on. I'll put it on the table. How much you got? I'll give it. <laughs> eightpence, take me. <laughs> Then, is it 25 and 4 must hate me between us? Hello. What's this? Hey, hey, don't smile. Give it here. Application for membership to the Bunny Club. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it pathetic? What are you trying to do? Kill yourself? <laughs> well, you can knock down the head for a start. You are not joining that. Hello, what's this? Another bird? Hey, give me purse back. School reports. <laughs> Al Steptoe, age 12. Ah. <laughs> Position in class, 47. <laughs> Pupils in class, 48. <laughs> History, C minus. Does not try. Sums, C minus. Shows no aptitude. English, C minus. Does not concentrate. Geography, C minus, an improvement. <laughs> Science, C minus, I've given up, recommend woodwork. <laughs> Headmaster's remarks. Owl does not seem to grasp anything that is taught him. He is a very difficult and worrying child and is in danger of becoming backward. <laughs> Were they all like this? I meant to burn it, Adam. I forgot all about it. No, it was never as bad as that. They hated me, them masters, because of you. That all the kids in school used to take the mickey out of me because I was a rag and bone man's son. 
I hated that school. I told you to take me away from it. Well, I did. Yeah, but you should have sent me to another one. <laughs> you learnt much more from me back here, I hope. Yeah, like how to be bankrupt at 38. Nah, don't start all that again. What do you mean, don't start all that again? We haven't finished it yet, mate. I've got you like a lost which you are, aren't you, eh? You think all you've got to do is to bury that cadaverous little head of yours in the sand and everybody will go away. Well, we've got two choices. Either we can sit here waiting like lambs for the slaughter, or we can act how? Organise our resources. Now then, this is going to be a war of attrition, isn't it? The longer we hold out, the more chance we have of paying. Now, what we've got to do is to sort out exactly who out of all these is going to fire the first shot. Oh, well. <laughs> who is going to fire the second shot? <laughs> Mr. Steptoe. No. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I recognise you. I was shown a photograph of you. And I recognise you. You're Alex Douglas Holmes. I'm not. Yes, you are. I've seen a photograph of you. I'm nothing like him. Well, it only goes to show you can't trust photographs. Still! <laughs> you are Mr. Albert Steptoe, and I am giving you this on behalf of Buck and Fishmongers Limited. I don't want it. Oh, come on, sir, take it. No! Who is it, that? Global summons. Don't accept it. I'm not going to. I'll stick it through the letterbox. You can stick it up your coat for all that. <laughs> well, I've done my job. i delivered it. Oh, no, you haven't. A summons is not deemed to have been delivered until it's been placed into the hands of the recipient. And we ain't taking it. Good morning. Anywhere you know, I shall stay outside until you emerge, and then I shall deliver it to you. You have a long wait, mate. Oh, well, that's it. The siege has started. He's still in the yard. <laughs> we ought to go upstairs and throw boiling oil on him. <laughs> He's making himself comfortable, isn't he? This should be interesting. Well, there's rats in there. <laughs> Saw a great big black one running yesterday. There's probably a nest in there. Yeah. And if he keeps moving about like that, he'll have half a dozen sets of choppers sunk in his kyber. <laughs> vultures is gathering. What are we going to do, Harold? I don't know. Hey, let's get in touch with some of the boys. If they can't give us money, at least they can duff them up for us. Well, how do we do that? Smoke signals? We're cut off. <laughs> One of us will have to go for help. Yeah. We'll wait till nightfall. I'll creep into the yard, leap on the horse, and gallop through their lines. <laughs> Matching low over his neck as a fusillade of summons his whistle past me here, old. And then, when you're down to your last tenner catch me, I'll return with the cavalry. How's that, then? Well, we'll have to do something. We can't stay locked up in here forever. Well, what do you expect me to do? Tunnel our way out? <laughs> well, listen, what we've got to do is first find out how much grub we've got. Then we'll decide our tactics. You go and get it all. Put it on the table. I'll keep my eye on the enemy. <laughs> Still out there? Yeah. How much we got? Hey, I'll which one do you want? Is that all? <laughs> Snails and asparagus tips. I was going to go shopping today. Oh, well, that's going to keep us going for weeks, isn't it? Snails and asparagus tips. <laughs> of course, it couldn't be something more substantial like corned beef or rice pudding. What good stuff like that? One burp and you're empty. <laughs> you're not lying, are you? You haven't been putting stuff away for yourself, have you? I wouldn't do a thing like that. Not much, you wouldn't. Because if you have, I'll smash you. If I find you eating anything that ain't a snail or an asparagus tip, you've had it. I'm warning you. Hey, you stepped up. Open up. Hey, there's three more of them. A 
Uncle Stacy, the butcher. Come on. Open up. I've got a court order here. I want my money. Forty-three pounds, nine and six. Otherwise, these bailiffs are authorised to remove furniture and effects from your house to the value thereof. That bill is in dispute. My father says he ain't had it. I don't care what he says. My book says he has. Didn't you make enough out of everybody round here during the war? Yeah, yeah. And just what do you mean by that? Yeah, well, well, we was fighting for our country, not sitting in our air raid shelter, churning out black market sausages. <laughs> I'll sue you for libel as well. Now, come on. Come out of here. We've got the court's permission. I don't know. You've got the brass face to go anywhere near a court. An Englishman's home is his castle, you aren't coming in. I'm warning you. We have authority to effect an entrance by force, if necessary. I've got a gun here. Nah. Will you touch that door? And you'll get a barrel load of buckshot right through your pullover. <laughs> <laughs> He's bluffing. Come on, break it down. That's true. Oh, my <laughs> You wait till the court's hear about this. Yeah, and you wait till we hear about you. Deliberately letting a poor old age pensioner run up expensive bills. Knowing full well he's not right in his head and not responsible for his actions. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shut up. <laughs> ah, that's ridiculous. Your father's as sane as I am. No, when he gets to court, he won't be. <laughs> and I guess for all the other bills he's been allowed to run up. Nutty as a fruitcake he is. <laughs> Dad, you stop eating that carpet. Please, <laughs> boy. Let me be put away. Only for a little while. Well, I ain't ever people saying I'm potting. Well, look, Dad, it is the only way. Look, we'll plead insanity, they'll scrub the bills. You'll be out in three months. <laughs> Mr. Steptoe, I would like to have words with Mr. Steptoe Senior, please. Mr. Steptoe? He won't answer to that. Uh, he's a schizophrenic. I don't know who he is today. Try Napoleon. Napoleon? Yes, you remember. An army marches on its stomach. That's why I had all that stuff of you, for his troops. We ain't had any of it. <laughs> Mon General, do you wish to talk with the Anglais charcutier? <laughs> Say something in French. Nah, don't be dark. How on? <laughs> Vive la France! <laughs> Allons, enfants de la patrie, les jours de gloire est arrivé. Contre nous de la tyrannie. If I may make a suggestion, sir, seeing he's got the gun, why don't we wait till nightfall? Then perhaps we can surprise them under the cover of darkness. Oh, will you need me here? I think it would be advisable, sir. Oh, very well. I'll make me sausages in the morning. Come on, we'll come back later. <laughs> something. No, no. Open your mouth. What? <laughs> you swallowed something. Go on. Open your mouth. <laughs> that is biscuit. <laughs> Chocolate digestive. <laughs> Greedy little pig! Oh, th that is despicable, that is. All I've had is four rotten, uncooked snails. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, my bit of sleep. You've been stuffing chocolate biscuits inside you, haven't you? No, I haven't. It was only one I found in my coat pocket. It's been there for weeks. <laughs> I didn't like to wake you up. You looked so peaceful. You didn't want to wake me up. You could have left half in. I could have had it for breakfast, couldn't I? <laughs> oh, well, that's it. I mean, I, I feel like surrendering after that. You've destroyed anything that was between us, Father. That, that, is, that is repugnant, that is. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, parents have been known to starve themselves to feed their children, but you... So, oh, well... Oh, I found another one in my pocket. You can have it. Go away, I don't want it. Go away! A whole packet! <laughs> you have got a whole packet! Well, that's it. I'm finished forever! Uh. Stacy! Hey there! You can come in now! Ah, oh, don't bother. You're giving up. I've uh, surrendered. Let us see you showing a bit of sense for a change. Come on, take whatever you want. You can help yourself. I've lost interest, mate. If you can find more than 43 quid worth of stuff in there, you're in the wrong business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Step two. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Steptoe. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Steptoe. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Help yourself. Thanks. A whole packet. Right now. <laughs> what do you reckon? Three pound. Right. Oh, no, no, don't take his desk. That was me father's. Out of the way, please. <laughs> On this table, it looks solid enough. Thirty-one. Oh, right. Mrs. Daisy, please don't take me home away from me. I'm an old man. I have to go into the workhouse. You should have thought of that before, shouldn't you? Now, out of the way, please. <laughs> What about this? Pound? Fifteen, Bob. Right. Let's have a look what's upstairs. Oh, Mrs. Daisy, you're a rich man. You don't need all this stuff. Stop him, Harold! Oh, Mrs. Daisy, I'll beg of you. Don't take it all away from me. Leave Will me, you Please Harold. leave go of me. <laughs> Mrs. Daisy! Mrs. Daisy! A whole pack. <laughs> Leave me, baby! You need to get away from me! Dad? Dad? You all right? Dad? Dad? What have you done to my dad? Look, I didn't do anything. He slipped. I hardly touched him. You threw an old man down the stairs. I didn't. You fell. <laughs> a poor old man, out of his mind. All he's trying to do is defend his meagre little possessions against a grasping capitalist wanting his pound of flesh. Breaking into his <laughs> cottage in the middle of the night. Now listen to me. These two men saw what happened. They saw it was an accident. I was in the other room. I didn't actually see what happened. But, oh, my, my back was turned. I couldn't actually swear to what... what but you must have done... No. Look, look. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll forget about the bill. We'll even forget about the bill. I don't want any trouble. No, this is most unfortunate. Listen, don't you think you'd better get him a doctor? Oh, my legs. My legs. I can't feel my legs. Don't move, Father. Harold, have they taken me home away from me? No, Father. I, I won't let them do that. You're going to be all right. We're going to get you to hospital. Don't worry. Will I walk again, Harold? <laughs> yes, Father. Of course, of course you will. Well, I'll make you pay for this. I'll take you through every court in this oh, land. Oh, no, no, now, come, 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 now. We don't want to go to any courts, do we? Look, I I'm sure we can come to a suitable arrangement. Uh, do you think a hundred pounds might make the old man feel a bit better? <laughs> He won't even begin to pay for his hospital expenses. Well, his hospital expenses are free. You don't have to pay for those. Yeah, but then they're going to ask questions, aren't they? 
And I'm afraid I'm not a very good liar, Mr. Stacy. Well, Lies don't come easy to me. We're, we're having treated privately in some secluded sanatorium somewhere. Oh, oh but here, perhaps. Look, I'll give you 150. Please don't insult me, Mr. Stacy. 200. Oh, my legs, my legs. <laughs> oh, you for mercy's sake. You're a butcher. Put me out of me agony. You know. <laughs> I don't want to get anybody into any trouble. I accept. Right. Make it out to cash, will yes, you, yes, please? Yes, 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 of course. Of course. Blood money. <laughs> there we are. Well, uh, I think I'd better be going. I hope it gets better soon. You know, I think you ought to get a doctor for him after I've gone, of course. And I'll call back later and see how he is. No, I wouldn't bother to do that far, would you? It would be better if you was to keep away. And, of course, under the circumstances, we shall be changing our butcher. Your meat would chap me after this. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, good night, Mr. Good night, Mr. Step Two. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're solving again. We're solving again. Oh, God. <laughs> That is nothing to what I'm going to do to you. What's the matter with you? You have made me feel like a criminal. That is what's the matter with me. You've made me feel unclean. Putting on an act like that, you even took me in for the minute. <laughs> Look, we've got this dishonest. Father, we can't take this money. It's like, it's, it's like having it under false pretenses. Well, it's as good as stolen. Stolen? I worked hard for that money, falling downstairs, <laughs> brilliant acting performance. Lawrence Olivia would have got 500 for that. <laughs> anyway, that Stacey deserved it. He was always fiddling us for years. We've only got back what he stole all for us. No, Father. For the first time in my life, you've made me feel like a criminal. Yeah. Never bothered him, did it? I bet he never paid us for that sausage machine we bought for him. But that's beside the point. Two wrongs do not make a right, Father. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. Quarter to twelve. There's a, a Chinese restaurant in Kensington High Street down close to one. We'll go up there and have a good old blowout. I'm going to have lobster sweet and sour and soft spare ribs. Oh, we can't, Father, but we can't spend. And, and pork and pineapple and chicken and almonds. Oh, it's, it's not right, Father. We can't. And, and then lovely crispy spring rolls. Oh, God. I'll pay him back, Father. I'll just have to work harder. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll look upon this as a fortuitous loan. Yeah, all right. We'll save ten pounds a week till it's all paid off. And I'll have chicken chow mein and oysters and lobster. And beef and onions. And I'll choose the one. And the bottle will close out the budget. Yeah, and some of that fine grand shampoo, cognac brandy. Really <laughs> lovely. Oh, Harold. What? They won't cash that check in there. Oh, it's all right. I'll sign for it. I've got an account there. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs>